all the way back in 2014, a little game developer by the name of Scott Cawthon would release a game known as Five Nights at Freddy's. An indie, indie horror, horror game that you guys suggested on mass, 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 and, and I, I saw that Yami Mash, mash played it. it. And if you've been on social media lately, you may have seen that FNAF is making the rounds again. And even though the first game came out eight years ago, the franchise has seen a resurgence in the mainstream media through its new game, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. And while Security Breach is good and all, that's not what I'm here to talk about today. My name's Heiko, and today we're going to be winding the clock back to early 2015, when Scott Cawthon released the third installment in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, fittingly named Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Now specifically, I want to talk about this guy right here, Springtrap, also known as the man behind the slaughter, William Afton. Okay, listen, I'm not qualified at all to talk about the FNAF 4, so I'm not going to delve into it that much because god is it a mess. But obviously, I've got to talk about some stuff just to clear it up for the people who are unaware. William Afton, this guy, is basically the main antagonist of FNAF. Why? Well, TLDR, he murdered a bunch of kids and then stuffed them into animatronic suits, and now the souls of the victims that are possessing said animatronic suits are out to kill you. So how did Afton go from purple guy to Springtrap? Well, one night Afton decided to go back and destroy the possessed animatronic suits to get rid of the evidence. In doing so, the victims, once freed, decided to do a little tomfoolery and basically just corner Afton in a back room and terrorize him. Afton then decided to put on an old spring bonnie suit in a bid to fight back, and as the old saying goes, a fuck around and find out, Afton did find out that the old spring lock suits that sit in back rooms unmaintained for years aren't usually safe to operate. And as the victims he once murdered watch him bleed out on the floor from his horrific injuries, he remembered that he had the power of Remnant on his side as well, which gave him immortality. Now, you may be asking, All you need to know is that it's the reason that Afton is alive, and why there are animatronics possessed by dead children, TLDR, it's soul power. After Afton was presumed dead, the back room was sealed up and left to rot. The year is 2023, and the events of FNAF 3 are about to take place. Now, seeing as their company is caked in the blood of supposedly dead children, Fazbear Entertainment decided to open up a horror attraction called Fazbear Frights, based on the rumors of their past locations. But before they could open up, they needed a hook, something that people could come in and be immersed into the attraction. And eventually, they would find something. In their search to find a vintage animatronic, they came across this guy, who's definitely a normal animatronic, nothing suspicious about him at all. Needless to say, maybe this wasn't the best of their ideas. So, after letting Springtrap roam the building for six nights, terrorizing the security guard, Fazbear's fright burned to the ground in what was definitely an electrical fire, and definitely not arson. And it definitely killed Afton for good. Oh, for fuck's sake. Listen, I'm not going to talk about Scrap Trap because frankly, I don't want to, and his design is horrendous. Painted ass looking motherfucker. So I think this is a great time to just move on to the main subject of the video. Why Spring Trap is the pinnacle of character design in FNAF. But Tycho, the title says in horror. Yeah, I, I know, it's called clickbait. Listen, there is no way in hell I can make a case for Springtrap being better than the likes of Jason Voorhees or the Xenomorph, but could I make a case for him being the best in FNAF? You're goddamn right I could. Let's start with the man behind the suit, or should I say, the slaughter. William Afton, as an antagonist in horror, he's pretty decent. He's a psycho mass murderer that stuffs dead children into animatronics and then builds animatronics specifically to kill children. He's managed to cheat death god knows how many times, and he's purple, so bonus points there. Here's the thing, on visual design alone, I'd actually have to give the pinnacle of design title to the nightmare animatronics. But here's the catch they don't really have any personality, and that's what makes Springtrap tower over every other character in this series. Like I said, William Afton is a psycho mass murderer, and now with the added fact that he's a decaying zombie bunny animatronic, it makes Springtrap the most ominous and terrifying character in the series. The way he lurks around the dark and decrepit environment of FNAF 3 is just amazing. Well, except for... God damn it, Scott. But hey, you can only get so far in life with personality. So let's talk about visual design. First, let's start with the not so great parts of this design. What the fuck is this? 
Listen, I know at this point it's pretty common knowledge in the FNAF community that Scott Cawthon is not the best at modeling humans, but come on, ankle guts, ankle guts, ankle guts. Like realistically, the entirety of William Afton's body would have decomposed, possibly including some of the bones. So why is there still leftover tissue? You know, I guess I can't really complain that much considering the abomination unto thy lord thy god that is Scrap Shop exists, and the fact that with the suit over it, this corpse design doesn't look too bad. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about why visually this design is amazing. Springtrap is a unique and quintessential of a man-machine amalgamation in horror. Even though he is technically a human fused with robot parts, he just doesn't fit the definition of a cyborg. All the benefits that he once had of smooth and fluid human-like movement are gone as he now mechanically trudges around. And I think the scariest part about Springtrap is that even though everything that made him physically human has decayed, he seems too alive, too animated, too human, and that's terrifying. Every other animatronic that is possessed by a spirit in this series just seems lifeless and uncanny, while Springtrap is just so alive that he goes from being uncanny to downright horrifying. I mean, you can look at a picture of Springtrap and there's just something immediately off-putting about him. Something that distinctly separates him from every other character in this franchise. It's no wonder that there has been an absolutely monumental push to get him added to Dead by Daily, as he's an amazing slasher type character. Aside from that, the design of the rotted and decrepit spring body suit itself is incredible. For 30 odd years, this suit has had a dead body rotting and fermenting in it, covered in blood, piss, and other bodily fluids. Its once bright golden fur is now a moldy green, frayed wires and decomposing flesh exposed through its decaying exterior. Everything about Springtrap, from the rotting corpse inside to the rotting suit outside, combines to make one amazing murderous man-machine amalgamation. Now, when you have a character like William Afton that's been silent for a good majority of the FNAF franchise, fans will take it into their own hands to interpret the character how they want. And boy, have they interpreted Springtrap in every goddamn way. Some better than others. But you see, that's what I want to talk about, because I think that when it comes to fan interpretation, that's where the character of Springtrap really thrives. Now, you might be saying, Springtrap's only a good and well-made character because people have made him a good and well-made character. And, well, yes, but also no. See, here's the thing. Most people's artistic interpretation of Springtrap remain loyal to the character. First, let's look at what, in my opinion, is the best real-life interpretation of Springtrap. Enter Deregular Sauce, an incredibly talented cosplayer that has put together some of the best cosplays I've ever seen. And if you've been around the FNAF TikTok or YouTube space recently, you're probably familiar with his Springtrap cosplay. And I shit you not, his Springtrap cosplay is the sole reason I got back into FNAF recently because holy shit it's good. Like the attention to detail in the suit is just jaw dropping and the way he gets into character slowly and methodically trotting around like the actual spring trap is amazing. Also it's fucking hilarious watching him actually scare people and I can't wait to see what he does next with spring God damn it. Now, moving from the real world to the world of animation, let's talk about J Gems. Now, J Gems is an incredible animator, and his work is genuinely amazing. The highlight of it all is the Interviewed series, which began with an interview with Springtrap. And the series has now spiraled into this insane story that takes a big turn away from the traditional FNAF lore, and in that case, I guess I should give a small summary of it. Now, before I say anything more, I highly suggest you pause this video and go watch all of the interviewed series, it's not that long and I promise you won't regret it. So let's begin with these guys, the GEMS. They're kind of like a private military organization thingy, we really don't know a lot about them other than they want to catch Springtrap. The problem is, so do all the animatronics, for obvious reasons. So the animatronics hatch a plan. Since the GEMS have Springtrap, the animatronics basically decide to just turn themselves into the GEMS for an interrogation. They then cut the power to the facility, murder the interrogators, yoink Springtrap, and get the hell out of there. Except Bonnie decides he doesn't want to kill a good bloke over here because they've come to the realization that they're both after Springtrap. Good bloke and Bonnie make a deal so that the animatronics and gems can hopefully work together. Hijinks ensues. Now that is a very, very, very brief summary of the whole series up to the Remnant Trials, and I probably missed or got a few things wrong. 
but I'm not here to talk about the interviewed series as a whole. No, I'm here to talk about Springtrap in the interviewed series. Voiced by J. Gems himself at first, up to an interview with Bonnie again, and then by the very talented Joder Love from Ventilation Altercation Short onwards, Springtrap in the series goes from being this menacing, powerful, re-embodied mass murderer to a frail old man who just gets tossed around by the animatronics. But the character is not lost on this. I genuinely do not have the words to describe how amazing Love's performance is. He perfectly captures the psychotic and twisted nature of William Afton. It's incredible. They don't know what they're playing with. No. We're here to kill you and end everything once and for all. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> Moving on from J-Gems, there's no way I could make a video on Springtrap and talk about interpretation without mentioning Springtrap and Delia. Springtrap and Delia was a fan-made comic series made by Grey Wolf Quinn and famously dubbed by Sans Comic TV. Now, usually when people write or play the character of Springtrap, he's usually a psychotic mass murderer. But Springtrap and Delia takes a more interesting approach. Instead, Springtrap was a psychotic mass murderer, but is now trying to better himself as a quote-unquote person, yet he's still haunted by the events of his past. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a second and ask that if you haven't seen Springtrap and Delia yet, that you immediately go and check it out because it is genuinely amazing. I've linked the dub down in the description, go watch it. Now back to what I was saying, the writing for Springtrap's character in Springtrap Delia is Wow. There are moments in the series like the nightmare sequence and the dark ending where the writing goes back to Springtrap's dark roots, and in the case of the dark ending, it's so good it's actually uncomfortable to watch. Like without spoiling too much, the good ending is sad while the dark ending is just straight up uncomfortable to watch, and that's amazing. Now I could talk on and on and on about Springtrap and Delia for hours, but I don't want to spoil it too much for those who haven't watched it because it is definitely worth your time. Springtrap, William Afton, Purple Guy, Peepaw Willy, whatever you want to call him, Springtrap is one of, if not the best characters in FNAF. His ominous slasher type character fits his decaying and decrepit appearance so well, and no matter which way you look at him, his design, his character, everything about him is horrifying and incredible. And after all that, I still don't get why people simp for him. Melody. 